welcome everyone. Um, we're going to get started in about three minutes with our body weight strength training class. You're going to need either sneakers or bare feet, no socks because they could be a slip wrist, preferably. Um, you could bring along a mat if you'd like, we will be doing some work on the floor, loose comfortable clothing and of course some water as well. So we meet you back here in a couple of minutes and we'll get started. All right, hey everyone, thanks so much for being here this evening. Um, we're going to get started with just a nice, easy warm up while I explain what we're going to do throughout our class today. So, I'd like you to just start with a little march in place. Inhale, reach the arms up toward the sky, and then we're going to exhale and release. So as we go through our warm-up, for about the first five to seven minutes of our class, I want you to really focus on muscular engagement in the areas that I'll indicate to you. We want to look at our perfect form, keeping the shoulders down and back, away from the ears, and we're looking to safely increase our heart rate and the blood flow to our muscles and our extremities before we get started in earnest, because I promise you, we're definitely going to feel it. So even if you feel the urge to move a little bit faster, or work a little harder for that first little while, just resist. I promise we'll get to that. Okay, now coming into wide feet, I like you to just come into a nice little slow squat and back up. Hands can be wherever you like, except on the thighs. So we're just practicing this movement, warming up the knees, and looking at where our range of motion is today. You might be up here on top, just a couple of inches, or you might just hold here and push into the outside of the feet and then release. That's still gonna help you to strengthen that muscle tissue without any impact on your joints. Good, two more just like that. Great, last one here. Now just a little heel raise, one side and then the other. So now we're just very gently increasing the heart rate while we wake up our shoulders and our knees. Good. Breathe. Good. And as we uh, inhale, I'd like you to think about breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as you breathe in, we're expanding the rib cage and the belly and work on bringing that breath down into the body rather than up high on the chest. We'll get a lot more out of it that way. Give me just three more like that. Last one. Now we're going to try a hip roll. Knee comes up, over, and down. Take three steps and then do it again on the other side. Step, 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 knee roll. Step, 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 knee roll. Good, yeah, excellent. And if this is not comfortable for you to come up and around, you can keep that toe on the floor and just do a little pivot. What we're working on here is opening our hips and also engaging the lower abdominal muscles. You can move faster than me or slower than me. And don't worry about uh, any kind of sequencing or coordination or any of that. What we want to work on is precision. Coordination doesn't matter. Muscle engagement does. Focus does. Good. Breathe deep. Hopefully we're starting to feel a little bit warmer and more awake already. I know I am. Good. Give me one more time on each side there. Last one. Good. Now wide feet and we're just going to kick one heel back and stand on one leg. Then tap the toe down and kick it out and back. Tap down, kick out and back. 
Tap down, kick out and back. Good, this is five. Nice and slow, and I want you to feel the glute muscles engage. Six, and we're looking also for our single leg balance. One more time. Now the other side, extend that leg out, feel the glutes engage. Out and back, not right beside you or in front. And then we'll tap in and out. Here's three. Good, now throughout our workout, I also want you to think about squeezing your belly button toward the spine, keeping the shoulders down and back away from the ears. Two more. Last one, okay, now coming into walkouts. If you have a mat, you might wanna have it rolled out in the section of your area. And we're just gonna stand nice and tall, back of the mat if you got one. Breathe in deep, reach up, extend. Exhale, fold forward. And we're gonna walk the hands out just into downward dog. Good, and then walk the hands back, forward fold. Walk out, down dog. Shoulders down away from the ears. Walk back, forward fold. Waking up the muscles of the arms. Walk forward, down dog. Press the heels down. Walk back, forward fold. Now walk all the way out into plank. If you're able, remember that your knees can come to the floor anytime. We're just gonna hold here with the modification of your choice. So remember, knees can be down. And you can be in table pose if that's more comfortable for you. Good, check your shoulders are down away from the ears and we never drop the head or the hips. Keep everything nice and straight and strong. Now we're gonna bring the knees to the floor, sit back in a child's pose. Now shift forward plank pose and back to child's pose. Now we're doing this movement called the rock and that's waking up all of our joints and our spine and helping us to find the proper alignment for our hips and our knees and our shoulders and elbows. You'll see babies do this. Babies are great at primitive primal movement. They really know what they're doing and they're super tuned into their bodies. And we lose that as we get older. So I want you to really focus. When you come forward, shoulders line up over the wrists. When you come back, your knees are gonna decide how wide they wanna be and your toes can be curled under or you can have the tops of the feet on the floor. If you're ready for more, come forward and bring the knees up off the floor and plank. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Slow down the movement now. And I want you to really focus on warming up. Suck your belly button toward the spine. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears as far as they'll go. When you sit back in a child's pose, you can keep the knees lifted as well. If you're feeling like you're really ready for more, keep them lifted throughout the sequence. One more time. Plank pose. Now come into down dog. Lift the hips. Take a break. You can sit back in a child's pose if that's the break you need. And now we're going to step the right foot forward to the outside of the hands. Sink down into the hips. If this is not comfortable for you, bring the back knee to the floor and the elbows up onto the front thigh. Right, make it yours. Good. Breathe. And then just reach that left arm up toward the sky. Bring the hands back down under the shoulders. Step the right foot back. Plank pose. Left foot comes forward outside the hands. Right arm reaches up toward the sky. Hands down under shoulders, left leg comes back, right leg forward, left arm reaches, let your hips stretch, hands down under shoulders, right leg comes back, left foot comes forward, last one, right arm reaches, hands come down to either side of the front foot, step forward into forward fold, relax down, bend your knees, roll up, shoulders down, take a deep breath in and reach up. Exhale, release the arms, and now again with wide feet, let's work a little bit on our abdominal flexibility. So, reaching out to one side, then center, then the other side. Hug those arms right in toward the chest. When you recenter, exhale, reach, inhale, center. So when you twist, I want you to feel the muscles surrounding the rib cage on the sides and the back of the body, stretching out and extending. I want you to feel your body pivoting from the belly button to the crown of the head and we're using the power of those transverse abdominal muscles. If you want more, sink a little deeper. Move slowly, inhale, exhale, reach, inhale, exhale, reach. Push into the outsides of your feet, engage the glutes. One more each side. Last one, now reach up high, extend up and then out, up and then out. So now we're going to reach out to the sides and as you bend again, I want you to think about opening up the rib cage. Exhale, inhale, reach. So we're focusing on engaging the core and expanding those muscles so that they're going to help us to get a deeper, fuller breath without having to think about it later in class. One more time on each side. Good. 
Last one here. Now inhale, reach the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, squat and brush the floor or as close as you can get. Inhale up, exhale, squat. Inhale, reach. Exhale down. Good. Give me four more just like that. Push into the outsides of the feet as you rise and see if you can keep the knees lined up over the tops of the feet. One more time. Let's take one big stretch here. Clasp the hands together, palms toward the sky if you're able. You can arch the upper back and then come to one side. Inhale, center, bend to the other side. Reach up, bend the elbows, palms face you, bring them down. Shake it out. And we're going to walk it out a couple more times with, uh, with a little um, additional intensity. We're just about done our warm up, so we're going to come into our glute engagement now. So again, at the back of your mat, if you've got one, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Walk out into plank pose. Now we're going to hold here, knees on the floor if you need. And if your legs are up, knees are up off the floor, we're just going to tap one side and then the other. Or you can keep your knees down and lift one side and then the other. I want you to suck your belly button toward the spine. So as we move through our class today, our, uh, our, our real goal here is all about focus and precision and mind-body connection. So we're not going to move really fast. What we did in the warm-up is the closest we're going to get to cardio in this class. But we're going to feel that heart rate increase and we're going to increase our power and our strength and our endurance. Two more just like that. Good. Sit back into the heels. Take a quick little break. Good. And now we're going to come into glutes. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips now for our table pose. Good. And let's lift that right heel toward the sky. We're going to pulse for 20, 3, 4. I want you to think about trying to push a button on the ceiling with your heel. Suck your belly button toward the spine and make sure your lower back doesn't arch. We're moving slowly. And you have five more. Two. Last one. Release down. Sit back. We're going to come to the other side. Just wake it up. Left heel comes toward the sky. We're going to pulse. Two. Three. For 20. Five. Is your core engaged? Are your shoulders down and back? Good. Yeah. Five more. Four. Three. Two. And last one. Knees down. Sit back. Okay, guys, let's get into it. So center yourself, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Extend the right leg straight back. Good. And if you want to make this harder, bring your left hand to your right shoulder. Now we're going to pulse that heel. Good. Yes. For 32, 30 reps. Here's three, four, five. Keep your shoulders wide. Breathe. Good. If this starts to get hard, especially if you feel pain in your neck and shoulders, you can always bring the elbows to the floor. Good. There's 20. 10 more. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Okay, guys. We're not done with this side. Last one. Now we're going to do the rainbows. Up and out. Up and in. Up and out. Up and in. You might want to bring that left hand back to the floor. We're only doing 15 of these. Uh, only. Good. There's 6, 7. Don't let your body move at all if you can help it. Stabilize. Nine, ten. If your hand is up, your core is going to have to work a lot harder. Whew. Thirteen, fourteen. Last one. Hold it. Both hands down. Right knee toward the shoulder. And then kick it back. Twenty reps. Shoulders down away from the ears. Good. Breathe. You can move slower than me if you want to. You can move faster than me if you want to. Breathe. You can keep it strong, guys, for that core. Suck your belly button toward the spine. Shoulders pressed down away from the ears. Good. Four more. Three. Two. And last one. Oh, my goodness. Knees down. Now, you're going to notice in this class, we're going to do a lot of stuff that looks really easy and really isn't. So, remember that you can take a break anytime you need one. Let's come along to the other side. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And we're going to extend that left leg straight back behind us. Good. Let's pulse. One, two, three. Suck your belly button toward the spine. Don't let it drop toward the floor. Good. Yeah, we're keeping that core nice and strong. Shoulders down and back. Halfway there, guys. No problem, right? 
So glute exercises often are going to work both sides at the same time, which makes them a lot harder than a lot of other exercises. So take a break whenever you need one. Breathe, five, four, three, two, rainbows, big arc. Don't move your body if you want this to be harder. Right hand to left shoulder. Good. Five, six, going for 15, seven, up and down, up and down. Good. Nine, 10, feel your core stabilize. Remember, you can decrease intensity anytime. Ooh, one more, guys. All right, hold it. Hands to floor, knee to shoulder, kick back. Two, and three, and four. When you pull it in, try and keep your heel level with the knee. Good. Here's halfway, that's 10. 11. Ooh, keep it strong, guys, stabilize. Whew. Right on. 17, 18, smile, we're just getting started. Last one here. Knees down, sit back. I really hope you're feeling that in the glutes. We wanna make sure that we're engaging those muscles as we're working later in the class to help keep our hip flexors and quads nice and safe. Now let's roll over and we're gonna wake up our abs from the bottom up. So lay down on the floor and I'd like you to relax the arms at the sides, lengthen the neck, press the back of the neck, down to the floor and lift your shins up parallel with the floor. Knees, hips, and ankles are all on a straight plane. And now we're just going to tap one heel, bring it back, on the other side. Two more just like that. You can stay here, or if you want more, extend the leg out and almost tap the heel to the floor. What I want you to make really sure of is that your lower back is pressing down, the belly button is pressing toward the spine, and your neck and shoulders are relaxed on the floor, whatever movement you're doing. So if you find your back popping up or your shoulders tensing up, reduce your intensity. Breathe. Now if you want more than that, both legs at the same time. Out and tuck them in. Out and tuck them in. Suck your belly button towards your spine. Don't let your abdominal muscles pop out when you contract them. Keep them nice and tight. Good, shoulders down. Just a few more of these guys. Good, excellent, really good. Last one here. Right on. Now let's bring the feet back to the floor and lift the heels. What we're looking at here is really focusing on engaging our different abdominal muscles at different times so we can really figure out what we're doing and how to do it properly. Fingertips to the temples or behind the head. Elbows are wide and we're supporting the weight of the head. Heels are lifted to keep the lower body engaged. Gaze toward the ceiling. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, and I want you to just squeeze your belly button toward the spine and lift your shoulder blades off the floor and hold right there. Just hold. You can come back down to the floor anytime you need to. I just want you to notice that this band, right between your belly button and the bottom of your rib cage, is what's working the most. So I want you to think about sucking the belly button in and then up. And that's what we want to feel working with this next set. If you want more, shins come up parallel with the floor. And we're just going to come into a standard crunch. Inhale, down and up. Down and up. Good. Right on, guys. Three more just like that. You can stay with this pattern or come with me. We're going to reach for the ankles, come up and pulse. Seven, six, five, four. Shoulders down. Two, release down. Inhale, exhale, seven. Six, keep the neck long, support the head if you need to. Two more, release down. Last one here, crunch, crunch. Keep the neck long, never bring the chin to the chest. Good, keep it nice and straight. Two more, last one, release, stretch it out. Great job, guys. So now we've addressed lower and middle abdominals. We're gonna move on to upper abs now. I'd like you to reach for the sky. You can keep the knees bent or straighten the legs out if that's comfortable for you. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and lift up and hold. Now I want you to feel the difference here. I want you to bring that contraction now into the top of your rib cage. Think of squeezing those muscles together and I want you to feel a little engagement too underneath the underarms, those muscles in the sides of the body. Good, now inhale down, exhale lift. Inhale down and lift, down and lift. Now see if you can really focus. Remember, you can support the head anytime I want you to really focus on those upper abdominal muscles. 
Three more just like that. Two. And last one. Now, you can stay there or come up with me for a little bit more complex movement for our upper abdominal muscles. So this is more of a Pilates move. I'm just going to get you to sit up with our knees pointed toward the sky or you can extend the legs out fully. Good. Shoulders down and back. Extend the neck. And we're going to lean back. You can grasp the knees or grasp underneath the knees if that's comfortable for you, if that's what you need to support yourself with a straight spine. Or you can reach up alongside the ears with me. Now I want you to think about holding an orange right here in what's called the xiphoid process where your ribs meet in front, there's a little tab and a little muscle. And I want you to think about exhaling and crushing the orange. And then inhaling, lifting, exhale and crush. Inhale, lift, exhale, crush. So I want you to think about only moving the top of your abdominal muscles. Think about squeezing the rib cage in. Inhale, lift, exhale, squeeze. Now when we do this movement, we do not drop the chin to the chest. The neck stays in line with the spine, so it curves with the spine. Your arms can come down across the shoulders if you need. Just make sure you're still contracting here in that upper band. Three more, lean back further if you want more. And two, and last one, and release, excellent job. Okay, so now we finished upper, middle, and lower abdominals, and we're gonna move on to our transverse abs and obliques. So let's do a little side plank. These are great muscles to work because they're so good for our stability and our balance. Let's bring the right elbow down. Actually, I'm gonna show you how to do this next exercise with no um, joint involvement at all first. So let's lay right down onto that bottom arm. Knees and hips are bent at 90 degrees. Top hand rests wherever is comfortable. I want you to take a deep breath in, exhale, and just squeeze your bottom hip toward the rib cage and hold here. Relax your arms and neck. I want you to feel those little muscles of the right side of the body. If you're laying on the right side, I want you to feel them contract. Good, just hold, lift a little higher if you can, squeeze them and then we're gonna release, good. You can come into repetitions of that movement if the, next, uh, uh, if the next options are not comfortable for you. Bring your elbow under your shoulder. You can be on the hip, on the knee, or stack the feet one on top of the other. We're gonna reach up with our top arm and just hold here for a minute and find our balance with the bottom elbow directly under the shoulder. Now we're going to take a deep breath in, exhale and reach around toward the opposite glute and I just want you to hold for a second. Make sure your, your hips stay exactly where they are, they do not tip forward, your shoulder squeezes and we're reaching. Now repetitions, inhale up, exhale, squeeze, inhale up, exhale, three of twelve, inhale up, exhale, four, squeeze, inhale up, exhale, five, up, and six, good. Reach, and seven. Whew, remember, you can take a break any time. The goal here is not to do every single movement um, at the highest intensity. It's just to gain a little strength and stability every time we do it. Last two, inhale, reach. Last one, and reach. Now hold here, or take a break, or reduce intensity, and we're gonna pulse. Ready? For 12, lift the hips, two. Three, four, five. Remember, you can bring that knee down at any time. Eight. Keep breathing, guys. Ten. Two more. Last one. Come into plank or release all together. Knees down. Sit back. Quick stretch. Okay. Whew, I know we felt that. Okay, other side, guys. So now coming down onto your side on the floor first. So again, just make a little bed for your head and our knees and our hips are bent at 90 degrees. Stack your shoulders one on top of the other as well as your hips and your knees. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and just contract the left oblique muscles. Squeezing your hip toward the bottom of the rib cage. Lifting the side body up off the floor as close as you can get. Just feel those muscles work. Relax your shoulders if you can. And then release. Good. Now, contractions um, with those obliques or you can come into the modification with me. Elbow under shoulder, knee, hip, or feet. Come on up and just hold. Just find your stability here. And now we'll come into that reach around. Exhale, squeeze for the opposite glute. Inhale, reach up. And now you know what the proper form looks like. So we keep our hips stacked on top of one another. 
We never let them drop. We never let them tip forward. Here's four. Our elbow is directly under the shoulder. Good. You can move a little faster than me as long as your form is perfect. The slower you move, the better your endurance training is going to be. Nine. Breathe. Ten. Great job, guys. Eleven. Last one. You got this. Come on. And hold on top. Take a break if you need one. Or come with me and pulse right away. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Keep that core strong. Eight. Pushing your bottom elbow. Ooh. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Plank. Knees down. Sit back. Quick stretch. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Great job, guys. Okay. Let's come on up now and use those glute muscles that we woke up earlier. Grab a drink of water, little sips. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of isometric pulsing here. I'll explain that as we go. Come into a lunge position, so stepping one leg straight back behind you. Toes stay pointed forward. Now here I want you to lift your back heel up off the floor, push your back knee forward, bend the back knee, and come into your low lunge position. Make sure your front knee is directly over the heel. Your weight is in the front heel, never in the toe. Lift the toes if you're not sure. We tuck the tailbone, and we should feel the front glute, because we're pushing down into our front heel, and also the back quadricep is working. Shoulders down. Now you can come into repetitions up and down, or come with me, come a little lower, and we're going to do an isometric pulse. So pulse just one to three inches in that lowest range of motion. Good. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Nice. This is 10 of 15. 13, 14, and come on up. Ooh, take a little break. Don't step in if you can help it. All right, come back down for two more sets. Lift your back heel. Ready? And pulse. 15, 14. Drive into your front heel. Good. Yep. Make that front glute work. Yes. Bring it into the front of the body, into your core. Ooh. Good. Two, and one, and up. Wow. Great job, guys. One more time. Push the back knee forward. Come on down and pulse. Good. Keep those shoulders wide. Arm placement is up to you, as long as the hands are not on the thigh. Okay? Good. Two more. Last one. And come on in. Great job, guys. Okay, go coming to the other side. So again, standing nice and tall. And we'll shift to the other side. Putting that other leg back behind us. Toes remain pointed forward. And we're going to lift our back heel up off the floor. Push the back knee forward. Bend your back knee. Come on down. We check our form and positioning first. Lift the front toes. Make sure your weight is in the front heel. If you're having balance problems, widen your feet out. Tuck your tailbone, lace up the core, shoulders down and wide, arms are wherever you want them. Hold here, come into repetitions, or pulse with me. One, two of 15. Breathe. Good, yep. Yeah. Right on, guys. Here's three, and two, and stand. Good. Quick break for our quads in the back, and now bending that knee again. Come on down. And here we go back to our pulse. One, two, three, four. Ooh, you got it, guys. Suck that belly button toward the spine. 10, 11, 12, 13. And straighten up. Oh my goodness, we still have one more. Wow, okay, so last one here. Push your back knee forward. Dig right in. Use those glutes on the front leg side. Let's go, 15. 14, little pulse, just tiny little. If you really want more, make the pulse bigger. Just make sure you maintain control. Whoo, dig in, guys. Three more, two more, last one. Oh, great job, shake it out. Well done, guys. Okay, we have just one more little lower body set before we come down, we're gonna do some upper body before we come into our stretch. So now, oh my goodness, stretch those quads. Give them a quick little break, and we're going to come into a combo curtsy lunge and squat. And I'm going to offer you some options to gain a little bit of power here if you want to try for that. Otherwise, you're just going to keep it nice and simple. So squat right down the middle, feet hip width apart or slightly wider. 
Toes point forward or slightly out to the side, but definitely in the same direction. We're just going to come down into squat and then stand up. That might be the only move you do, or you can come with me. Left foot crosses behind the right, and we're going to curtsy lunge. When you come down, just come down and hold here with me. Drive into your heel. Make sure these are the muscles working, so the abductors and adductors of the thighs. Now come back to center and squat. Stand tall, right foot crosses behind, long twisted lunge, bend both knees, sink down, hold here. This should be what you feel. Our weight is in the heel of the front foot, good, and then come on back up. Now if that was painful or uncomfortable, or if you're not sure if you were doing it right, simply squat is absolutely fine, okay? Ready, squat down the middle, left foot behind, and we'll curtsy. Squat, squat in the middle, right foot behind, curtsy. Squat in the middle, left foot behind. Ooh, good. This is rep number two that we've just finished. Now starting rep number three, and we're gonna do eight. Good, or not, <laughs> that's all right too. Remember, you're building every time we do this. Check your precision and alignment. Good. Breathe, keep those shoulders down. Oh my goodness, everybody needs a leg day. Believe me guys, <laughs> this is gonna do it for you. And you can start to just hold in the center and restrict your range of motion if it's becoming painful, okay? Give me two more just like that. We might be doing an extra one, but that's all right. Extra reps are always a good thing. Sink. Last one on each side. Last one here. Whew, and shake it out. Well done. All right. Let's come on back down to the floor through our walkout. So we're going to do a little walkout variation. Standing at the back of your mat if you have one. And we're going to reach up, breathe in. Exhale, fold forward. Walk out into plank. Brace your core. Shoulders down away from the ears. Your knees can come to the floor anytime. Okay guys, little combo sequence to finish us off. Let's tap one shoulder and the other, then each elbow, then each hand, then we're gonna lift one heel and then the other. Lift and lift, let's do it again. Shoulder, shoulder, elbow, elbow, hand, hand, heel, do it again. Shoulder, elbow, hand, heel. Good, four more reps, elbow, hand, and heel. That's one, shoulder, elbow, good, hand, and heel. Remember, you can come down to table pose anytime. If this is getting too intense for you, no problem, just lift from here. You got it, guys. Shoulder, elbow, hand, and heel. Last one, ready? Shoulder, elbow, Hand and heel. Knees down. Sit back, quick stretch. Great job, guys. Okay, now we're gonna do a little tricep option. So I'd like you to turn around and sit down on your mat or on the floor. And we're gonna bring our hands behind us, facing in. So pretty much as usual, I'm gonna show you our lowest key version first. If this is not okay for your neck and shoulders, reposition your hands or bring your hands to the back of a chair instead. Good, lift the chest, squeeze your core, and bend the elbows behind us, and push the floor away. This is your body weight modified tricep dip. I'd like you to make sure your neck stays long, shoulders stay down and back, and your elbows point straight back behind you when they bend. So never out to the sides, or else we're gonna hurt our shoulders, maybe not today, but someday. Good, breathe. Now, you can stay with this movement for a little longer, or if you want more, come with me, we're gonna lift the hips, and we're gonna bend the elbows, tricep dip. If that's still not hard enough, when you dip, lift one knee, and then the other, so coming into our march. Remember, check your elbows are straight back behind you, shoulders are down away from the ears. I want you to move slowly, with precision and focus, Focus your muscle contraction in the triceps and maybe also the anterior delt and biceps. So fronts of the shoulders and arms, but not up in the traps, not in your neck. Keep it low. Just a few more seconds, guys. 
Right on. Excellent. And release. Stretch whatever needs it. You might be feeling that in your arms and want a little quick release here. And then we're going to come over and do just a couple of push-up variations before we come into our cool down. So now, stretch those arms out. We're going to work them a little bit more. I'm going to show you our standard push-up, and then I'm going to offer you the option of coming into a pike push-up for your back. Shoulders down and back. Option one, table pose, no problem. Wide hands, and your elbows are in line with your shoulders and your wrists. Option two, plank pose on the knees. Again, elbows in line with shoulders and wrists. Don't drop the hips or the head toward the floor. Hands are under your shoulders, not in front of the body. So check that location. Good, now if you want more, lift the knees. Good, nice and easy, standard push up for the chest. Keep those shoulders way down. Check your elbow alignment. Give me one more, just like that. Knees down. Sit back and stretch. Great. Now, you can come back into that push-up variation or come with me for something a little bit more complex. We're gonna bring the hands to the floor. Make them really wide, wider than your shoulders. And we're gonna lift up into down dog. Lift the hips toward the sky. Now, in this position, we're engaging the muscles of the back more than the arms. Shift your body forward. Lift up onto the toes if you can. And we're gonna inhale, elbows out over the wrists. Tap the home floor, exhale, push away. So you should feel this contraction from the underarms down the sides of the body and into the back. Breathe. Remember your options. You might bring the knees to the floor and come into that tabletop push-up anytime. Good. Sink right down and always modification of your choice. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears and the core strong no matter what you're doing. Just a few more seconds here, guys. Whew. Right on, knees down. Sit back, a quick stretch. My goodness, well done. I think we've hit pretty much everything except for back. So, now we're gonna stand up once again. Come back through a walk out in a forward fold. Grab yourself a stretch on the way and a drink of water. And we're gonna come into a few final back exercises. So you can do these lying prone on the floor if you want to address your entire athletic complex on the back of the body. Or you can come with me. We find the standing version is a little bit more comfortable for most people in general. So we'll start by tipping forward from the hip. And I want you to find your stance here with your heels under your knees. Push into the outsides of the heel, uh, uh, outsides of the feet, and feel the lateral muscles of the legs engage. Shoulders down and back, and now you're going to reach forward with one arm or both arms. Okay, so use that support of the thigh if you need it. Shoulders down and back. Lift the arms up to align with the ears, and I just want you to hold here for a second and suck your belly button toward the spine. Knees are off lock, and we're going to figure out real quick how much more challenging this is than we might think it would be. I want you to feel all of the muscles of the back of the body engaging and your neck is long and relaxed. Now let's swing the arms back and forward. I want you to focus on maintaining your physical stability, especially through the core and the lower body. Nothing moves but your shoulder. If you need to, drop one hand and use only one arm. Breathe. If you're using only one arm, switch sides now, if you're able. And remember, if you have something like a bad shoulder and you can't do this on one side, then I would suggest trying as long as it doesn't hurt and restricting your range of motion or only working on the one side that does work for you. Tip a little lower if you want more. Push into the outsides of the feet. Last one here, hold the arms back behind you. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Rotate the elbows and hands in toward the body and then pulse up toward the sky. I want you to feel this in your middle and lower back, not up in the traps and neck and shoulders. Tip further if you want more. Bring one hand to the thigh if you want less. Good. Check, feel this through your shoulder blades. Breathe. Good, now hands down, straight down under the shoulder. You can take a break by rounding the spine. We're gonna come into one last exercise for those rhomboids, right between the shoulder blades. Hands down to the shoulders, inhale. Exhale, open up to the sides, thumbs toward the ceiling. And we should feel those muscles engage right away, right between those shoulders. 
Good, and now pulse the thumbs toward the sky. Remember, again, you might be here. Just make sure that you stabilize from one side of the body to the other. Squeeze your shoulder blades. Let your shoulders um, and the muscles at the back of the body, all those traps, lift the arms rather than the backs of the shoulders themselves in that rotator cuff. Good, if you're using one arm only, switch arms. If you need a break, take one any time. Breathe. Good, hands to thighs. Curve around, roll up. Shoulders down, good. All right, guys, that's all, we made it. So we're gonna grab a quick stretch now. I'd like you to just come into wide feet and fold forward. Just relax down toward the floor. And especially think about giving those lower back muscles a break. They worked really hard. You can shift one hip and then the other toward the sky. And you can shift the body toward one leg and then the other side if you'd like. Just make it yours. Now bend the knees, roll up, shoulders down. We're gonna step one leg forward. Other leg comes back. And we'll bring that back knee down to the floor. Your mat can be down underneath your knee. Tuck the tailbone. Feel that left hip flexor stretch. And if you'd like, you can reach up with the arm on the back leg side. You can lift the back knee up off the floor and straighten out that leg if you want to for a modified warrior. And if you'd like, you can come into a spinal twist with me, bringing the left hand to the outside of the right knee, looking out over the back shoulder. And the right arm can wrap around and brace on the opposite hip if that's comfortable for you. Good. Breathe, it should be getting easier to smile now. Oh, you guys did awesome tonight. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we did, especially if it hurt funny or if it hurts funny later. Good, and now we'll recenter. Hands on either side of the front foot. Step in, forward fold. Step the other leg back. The back knee can come to the floor to start. We're just gonna press up. Tucking the tailbone. Feeling the stretch begin in the hip flexor. You can lift the back knee up off the floor if you want to. Good, you can come up onto that front knee. Just make sure you're tucking the tailbone when you rise so that we don't hyperextend the lower back. And of course, you can reach up with the arm on the back leg side if you'd like. Or you can bring that right hand to the outside of the left knee. Twist around looking out over the back shoulder. And looking for that deep stretch through the hips and the muscles of the back. Lengthen the spine. As you inhale, expand the ribcage. As you exhale, deepen the stretch. One more deep breath in. Exhale, look forward, square the shoulders forward. Hands on either side of the front foot. Let's step forward into our forward fold. Relax down for just a moment. Good, bend the knees, roll up, shoulders down, reach up, breathe in. And release, excellent. Now come into our figure four to finish off. So standing nice and tall. Shifting to the left leg, bend the left knee. Right shin comes across the left thigh. You can sit down in a chair to do this movement if you want to. Or come to the floor and come into a half staff position if you prefer. What we're looking for here is that good stretch through the hip and thigh. We know those muscles work really hard. Good. Breathe deep, sink a little deeper if you can. You can press down on that right knee as long as it's okay for your joints. You can draw that leg in closer and sit down deeper to intensify your stretch if you want to. It's all yours. Good, now let's come on up. Right foot comes behind the left. And we're gonna bring the hand on the back leg side um, up toward the sky, breathing in deep. Exhale and bend. That hand on the front leg side can be on the hip or you can reach across the front of the body if you feel secure with your lower back strength and stability. Good, see if you can find the stretch in the right rib cage. Breathe, now inhale and come up. Exhale, tip forward from the hip. The front knee bends, the back leg is straight, and we're lifting our tailbone up toward the spine. So you can untwist the legs if this is uncomfortable for you, still keeping one leg straight and both hands on the bent knee. Good, I want you to feel that through the side and back of your right thigh. Now step out, roll up, and we'll come to the other side, beginning with figure four. So uh, shifting to the right side now, bend the right knee. Left shin comes across the right thigh. Draw the leg into position if you need to. Bend the right knee, sit right down, lift your tailbone toward the sky, and you'll feel the quality of your stretch deepen. Good, and you can also press down into that left leg. Check that your shoulder doesn't hike up toward the ear. And we're not pushing too hard. We're just being mindful and breathing deeply and looking to gently extend that stretch. Good, and now let's come up. Left foot comes behind the right, or 
um, whatever leg was up is going to come behind. Now the hand on the back leg side reaches up as we breathe in, and we bend. So again, looking for that deep extension through that left side body. So through the rib cage, through the obliques that we worked so hard in those little side pulses. And once you've done this class a couple of times, when you start to feel comfortable with these movements, I encourage you to do them um, on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever you want. It's going to help to improve your stabilization and your balance and all that good stuff. It's going to help you perform better too. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, tip from the hip. Front bent knee, back straight leg, or uncross the legs if that's uncomfortable for you. Good. And we're lifting our tailbone toward the sky, feeling that stretch in the outside and back of our straight leg. Breathe deeply. Good. Now let's step out, roll up, inhale, arms out to the sides and overhead, little baby back bend on top of the spine. Exhale, release down through prayer and release the arms. Give yourselves a hand. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here, for showing up and offer your lovely energy to this class. Um, I do uh, want to hear your feedback. If, like I said, if there's anything that seems um, like you weren't understanding it well or you're not sure if you were doing it right, let me know and hopefully we'll see you next Tuesday at 6.30. Thanks guys. Have a great night.